Yo, what's going on guys, Tanmaya for Simple Snippets back with another video tutorial on number systems and conversions. Now today's topic is going to be grey code encoding scheme which is based on binary numbers and we'll also discuss how to convert a binary number to a grey code and vice versa. Now in the previous video tutorial, we discussed about the BCD code. So if you have missed that video, you can see a card on the top right corner. And also if you're new on this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of information technology oriented video tutorials on this channel and a lot are coming soon. So you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video. And for that, you can just turn on the notifications as well. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so let's just go ahead with a little bit of theory on gray code and what exactly it is and what are the applications. And then later on, we'll see the conversion part wherein we convert binary to gray code and grey code to binary. So make sure you watch this video till the end so that you understand both theory as well as the conversion part. Okay, so let me just read out a little bit about grey code. So grey code is an encoding of numbers so that the adjacent numbers have a single digit difference by one. Okay, so basically grey code is a binary number itself that is the radix of grey code is 2 so it com comprises of only zeros and ones but then it is encoded in such a way that the adjacent numbers have single digit difference. So we'll see that when I show you the table as well and it will be more clear. So it is arranged so that every transition from one value to the next value involves only one bit change. Now it is named for Bell Labs researcher Frank Gray. So Frank Gray was the creator of this gray code who described it in 1947 and initially it was referred as binary reflected code. Now gray code is not weighted unlike binary code. So the columns of bits do not reflect an implicit base weight as the binary number system do. So we have 8421 code in binary so we assign the positional weights starting from LSB to MSB, right? Remember that? So we used to do that 2 raised to 0, 2 raised to 1. So in grey code that does not apply and grey code is not suited for mathematical operations but grey code sequences have to be converted to binary or BCD codes if they are supposed to be used in mathematical computations. So where exactly are these grey codes used? So grey codes are usually used where systems require one bit detection. So since the transition between one value to the next value or consecutive value involves a change in only one bit, it can be used to detect those changes. Grey codes are also used in K-maps. K-maps is a graphical tool which is used to simplify digital circuits and identify potential race conditions. We totally have a different video series on K-maps and Boolean algebra. You can see a card on the top right corner if you want to see those videos wherein I talked about Boolean algebra, digital electronics, K-maps and those circuits and all. I've covered all those parts. So if you are new on this channel, you can check those videos as well. And grey codes are widely used to facilitate error correction and detection in digital communications such as digital terrestrial televisions and some cable TV systems. Okay, this was just a little bit about theory on grey code, its applications, when was it founded and what exactly it is in terms of theory. Now let's see a practical example and we'll see it on the digital blackboard and you'll understand it more well. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, I have the grey code conversion table for 0 to 10 numbers. So the first column is decimal numbers in blue. The second one is binary numbers in green and its corresponding grey code is on the rightmost column. So these decimal numbers are just for reference purpose. Let's deal with binary and grey. So you can see the first binary number that is zero value is exactly the same. Even the second one is same. Now let's see for the third one. You can see for third one the binary number is 0010 based on the positional weight. So this is 2 raised to 1 which is equal to 2 in decimal. But grey code does not follow those positional weights. It follows bit difference. So you can see between in these two numbers only one bit has changed so you can see zero is same zero is same at the same positions so this is the MSB then this position is same 0 and 0 you can see there is a change over here so there is 0 and there is 1 and there is no change over here so you can see only one bit has changed so that's the crux of grey code in consecutive grey code numbers wherein only one bit difference is present in consecutive numbers so let's let's try to compare these two numbers you have 0011 and 0010 again only the last lsb is changed otherwise all these three numbers are same if you compare these two again there would be only one bit difference you can see 0 is same 00, zero. there is a change in this number 0 and 1 then 10 one and 10 one is same so again this bit was changed similarly if you compare consecutive numbers you will find that only one bit is being switched and there is only one bit difference so that's how gray code works and you must be wondering okay so these are some random values 
and they, they cannot be directly converted to decimal then how are how are we supposed to find those numbers so there is a technique of conversion from binary to gray code and vice versa so now let's go ahead and see those techniques that is those conversion conversion part okay now on the screen you can see on the left hand side we have binary to gray and on the right hand side we have gray to binary we'll go through the steps and we'll solve two two examples from both the conversion techniques so let's start off with binary to gray now before we start off with the conversion it is important that you know the concept of XOR operation if you don't know what XOR operation is I've extensively covered a video on that XOR operation you can see a card on the top right corner but in general what XOR operation means is for odd number of inputs the output is always going to be high just remember this sentence so say for example we have 0 XOR 0 so this is the symbol of XOR we have a plus and a circle around it the output would be 0 then we have 0 XOR 1 the output would be 1 now the reason why the output would be 1 is because odd number of inputs are high so this is one input and this is another input and you can see only one input is high and one is odd number so odd number of inputs are high so the output is going to be high otherwise it is going to be low just remember this concept that's that's about XOR operation right now that is only the thing that is going to be needing okay so let's just read the steps the MSB of the gray code will be exactly equal to the first bit of the given binary number now the second bit of the code will be exclusive or of the first and second bit of the given binary number so if both the bits are the same the result will be zero and if they are different the result will be one which is another way of saying if odd number of inputs are high the output is high the third bit of gray code will be equal to exclusive or of the second and third bit of the given binary and thus the binary to gray code conversion will go on okay now reading this theoretical steps I know it's not really very clear because you cannot exactly visualize it so let's go ahead and solve this question and it will be very easy to understand so we have to convert 1010 in binary to gray code so this G stands for gray you can also write down the complete word G R A Y so let me just first write down the number 1010 now step 1 the MSB of the gray code will be exactly equal to the first bit of the given binary number so the first bit is the MSB so that is going to be exactly same so let me just write it as it is so now let's read the second point now the second bit of the code will be exclusive or of the first and second bit of the given binary number so we have to take an or operation between these two numbers and that would be the output for the second bit of the gray code so 1 XOR 0 is going to be 1 so 1 XOR 0 is going to be 1 because odd number of inputs are high you can see or in other words if both the bits are same result would be 0 and if they are different the result will be 1 now both the bits are different so result would be 1 let's move on to third point so the third bit of gray code will be equal to exclusive or of the second and third bit of the given binary number so second and third bit you have to take again XOR so 0 XOR 1 is again going to be 1 because again odd number of inputs are high thus the binary to gray code conversion goes on so this thing goes on so we have to take the consecutive XOR operations so 1 XOR 0 is going to give us 1 so this is our final answer so that's about it it's pretty easy when we actually go ahead and see the steps and we actually can visualize it now let's take a bigger example you can see question number 2 and after solving this I'm pretty sure that it will be very clear to you let me just erase this out so the answer for question number 1 was 4 times 1 in gray now let's move on to question number 2 let me just write down this big binary number so we have 1 1 1 0 0 in fact let me just write it down below over here so I'll write down 1 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 1 okay so again let's repeat these three steps with this binary number write down the first digit as it is then take an XOR oper operation between the consecutive digits so 1 XOR 1 is going to be 0 because now you can see 1 X or 1 is going to be 0 because even number of inputs are high so even numbers which means in terms of this point number 2 if both the bits are same so bits are same right 1 and 1 it's same so output is going to be low so that's going to be 0 so that's why this is 0 now again taking XOR operation between these two values so 1 XOR 1 again 0 now 1 XOR 0 is going to be 1 0 XOR 0 is going to be 0 0 XOR 1 is going to be 1 1 XOR 1 is going to be 1 I'm sorry it's going to be 0 it's not going to be 1 it's going to be 0 then 1 XOR 0 is going to be 1 and lastly 0 XOR 1 is going to be 1 so again this is going to be the final answer in gray code for this corresponding binary code pretty simple right we just have to take XOR operation with the bin binary numbers consecutive, consecutive binary numbers and you get the output accordingly okay so this was about binary to gray conversion now let's see how to convert gray to binary number 
Okay, so again, I'll just read out the theoretical steps. So the MSB of the binary number will be equal to MSB of the given gray code. Now, if the second gray code bit is zero, the second binary bit will be same as the previous or the first bit. If the gray bit is one, the second binary bit will alter. And if it was one, it will be zero. And if it was zero, it will be one. Now, this step continues for all the bits to do gray code to the binary conversion. Okay, now the second step is pretty confusing in terms of the way it is written. But let's let's see the process and you will understand that it is very easy so let me just first write down the question 1101 now this is in gray code so step number one is the msb of the binary number will be equal to the msb of the gray code so this is the msb of the gray code so the binary msb also is going to be one so just write it as it is now what we have to do is just don't, don't read this point number two i think it's a little complicated what we have to do is we have to take xor operation between this first binary digit and the second gray digit if you take an XOR operation so 1 XOR 1 is going to give you 0 again now we have to take XOR operation between second binary digit and third gray digit and then it will give you 0 XOR 0 will give you 0 and lastly this third binary digit we have to take XOR operation with the fourth gray digit again XOR and then this will finally give you 0 XOR 1 will give you 1 so this is going to be your final answer in binary so 1101 is going to be equal to 1001 in binary so 1101 in gray is going to be 1001 in binary just remember this zigzag XOR operation steps and you don't need to actually remember the point number two it's a little confusing now if you want to cross check this what you can do is you can convert this binary back to gray code and we've just seen how to convert binary to gray so just write down this new binary number that you found as an answer 1001 and to cross reference we should get this number back so this is in binary to convert it we just first write down 1 as 1 so the first msb of the binary is going to be equal to the msb of gray then just take xor operation between consecutive binary digits so 1 xor 0 is going to give you 1 0 xor 0 is going to give you 0 and 0 xor 1 is going to give you 1 so there you go you can see we got our gray code back 1101 1101 so which means that our method was correct okay so i'll just erase this part now and we'll see the question number two which is a lengthy sum but the process is always going to be the same so i'll just write down the number it's a big number one zero one zero one and then three times one okay again step one is simple the msb of the binary number will be equal to msb of the given gray code so this is in gray we are converting gray to binary so the msb is going to be the same now again our step where we have to take cross xor operations so first digit of binary binary xor with second digit of gray so 1 xor 0 is going to give you 1 so 1 xor 1 is going to give you 0 0 xor 0 is going to give you 0 0 xor 1 is going to give you 1 1 xor 1 is going to give you 0 0 xor 1 is going to give you 1 and 1 xor 1 is going to give you 0 so this is going to be our final answer so this big gray code is equal to 11001010 in binary now if you want to cross check again you can apply this binary to gray code method that we just saw and get back this number so that you can cross reference it and now you can even apply gray code to binary to cross reference the first sum that we solved so 1111 in gray can be converted as follows just write down the first number then take xor operation between first binary bit and second gray bit so xor so 1 xor 1 is going to give you 0 0 xor 1 is going to give you 1 and 1 xor 1 is going to give you 0 so we got back our binary number so from 1 1 1 1 we got our 1 0 1 0 binary back okay so both binary to gray and gray to binary is working perfectly fine and we just saw the steps so yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you understood what gray code is what are its applications and little bit theory about gray code and then also the conversion of binary to gray and gray to binary also as you can see on the screen I also have an assignment for you guys wherein the first question is gray code to binary you can see 10101 in gray you have to convert it to binary and the second question is from binary to gray I have a big binary number you have to convert it to gray what you can do is you can put the answers in the comment section and then I'll let you know if they are correct or wrong and I'll also post these answers on the Instagram page of simple snippets so go ahead and follow simple snippets on Instagram I have put the link in the description and yeah that's it for this video guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with a friend and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Peace.